Okay, so I'm alive. Mm -hmm. That's debatable. Um, okay, so I guess after a lifetime of turmoil, persecution, uh, blacklisting, uh, the trials of which were unimaginable by any uh, normative standard. I find myself at the end of my life wondering what is truth? Uh, what is the essence of humanity? What does it all mean? When there is such a level, a degree of degradation and frustration, and corruption that is clearly um, ostensibly inexhaustible because it, it seems that there is an incessant uh, blockage, a quantum barrier, if you will, to uh, evolution, revolution, uh, indeed visibility of the potentiality that could be manifest, but isn't. It's very sad that after a lifetime of hard work, and focus, dedication, that I find uh, unquestionably, irrefragibly, indubitably, undoubtedly, that the so-called deep state is abhorrently corrupt. Corrupt to such an extent that millions and millions of people suffer and die needlessly. This is no exaggeration at all. Because 40 years ago, Jacobson Resonance explained what Einstein looked for in terms of grand unification. The equation, the simplest form of the equation, mc squared equals bvlq, represents the unification of the external field that is a normative state of reality that we perceive directly and the dark energy or other states of reality that exist throughout the space-time continuum separating the essentia, the monads, the subatomic particles Yeah, it's true. There is um, the existence of a quantum gravity in the human body, in all living systems, as a matter of fact. And it's represented by very weak magnetic fields, weak magnetic flux densities, and very low frequencies, extremely low frequencies. These fields for a human being begin at about a micro gauss, which is a typical um, strong brain field, and extend down through the picotesla range and then further below that. Indeed, we found that particular magnetic flux densities equal in number to Newton's gravitational constant represented the equalization or connection between the uh, atomic nucleus and dark neutrinos that comprise dark matter. 
it's very difficult. It seems impossible to communicate anything of any significance to this world because of stupidity, selfishness, greed, the kind of avarice that you wonder, uh, how could it possibly exist? How could people be so base? It's difficult to comprehend. I mean, Freud divided the brain, the mind, into three compartments, saying that the id was responsible for aggression and selfishness and all the basic animalistic desires. And clearly the id is more powerful than the ego and superego. The superego is totally dependent upon the example surrounding you through the environment. The ego is directly connected to the id, as a matter of fact. Which is very problematic because the id is always pulling on the ego. So we have uh, a political system that is most antithetical to platonic ideals. We don't have philosopher rulers. We have the word that comes to mind is cannibals. They just uh, eat that which is uh, possible for themselves, only themselves. How do I know I'm right? 40 years ago, I discovered an equation now known as Jacobson Resonance. And the equation relates electromagnetic interaction energy and dark energy, gravitational fields, uh, gravity waves, spin two gravitons with the piezoelectric effect and mechanical uh, oscillations, and mechanical vibrations of target masses contained within the structure of the external field, that is ordinary matter. The regulation of the structure of ordinary matter is dependent upon the uh, communications between gravity, magnetism, and electricity including, of course, the strong and weak nuclear forces. The separation of forces by man um, is simply based upon fallibility and uh, a mesoscopic perception. That's all it is. The fact of the matter is that cosmic interactions, which are explained very well explicable by Einstein's theories, mesoscopic interactions, ostensibly explained by Newtonian mechanics, and quantum mechanical interactions are actually all the same thing. The laws of physics are the same on every level of structure and function, the very large, the middle, and the very small. And the epistemological framework of quantum mechanics is clearly unrealistic. Um, you know, from a statistical point of view, it may have some um, validity, but outside of that, it, it's totally unclear. But what am I saying? I'm saying that uh, living systems maintain um, adherence or uh, communications networks between the cells and the, and the elemental structural components thereof through the magnetic force, uh, which is on a quantum level, the gravitational force. 
not very long ago, I was talking to a physicist who said that the weak magnetic fields uh, represented um, as physiologic by living systems uh, had a classical explanation and uh, they don't represent a quantum, a quantum gravitational uh, effect. Of course, he's wrong. He also said that places like um, CERN have to build tremendous accelerators larger than the Earth in order to unify uh, everything in the universe. He's wrong about that too. Modern physics, so-called modern physics, is no different than the physics uh, that existed at the turn of the century, the turn of the 20th century, more than 100 years ago. No different. Man has this tendency to always believe that he knows everything, or he knows just about everything, when in fact he knows nothing, or almost nothing. Let's just say we know very little. But the reason we know very little is because we don't try to do anything. Medical research, all it does is repeats, consistently repeats, wastes money, and doesn't do anything in, different in terms of experimentation. Let's talk about cancer, for, for example. You have ionizing radiation, which is poison. You have chemotherapy, which is poison. You have surgical procedures, which may save a life if cancer is localized. Otherwise, it just spreads it, just produces metastasis. So is this the way to approach cancer? Of course not. It's ridiculous. And yet they keep doing the same thing over and over again. And they spend billions and billions of dollars with the NIH repeating experiments, looking for new drugs that have even more adverse effects than, than the ones in the past? No. The cure for cancer, the cure for all disease can only come by renormalization of the human body such that the body is enabled to heal itself by reorganizing the structural disposition on a quantum level so that the congruent and coherent oscillatory trajectories of micro constituents uh, communicate properly such that the elemental structures, the monads, the atoms, the subatomic particles, the smallest structures will communicate uh, via maintaining analogous vortical, rotational, and relatively translational patterns. This is the only way to do it. You have to renormalize the magnetic profile of tissue in order to reorganize the structure at a fundamental level, which is the opposite of what the medical industry is doing today. The exact opposite. Another example of the application of Jacobson resonance, which is calculable, is applicative to thermonuclear fusion power. The ma major uh, areas of concern at Princeton, at Caltech, at CERN, at Fermilab, etc., national uh, laboratories, they keep doing the same thing over and over again. Again, the strong force, stronger is better. That's nonsense. It takes a very weak force to affect an individual atom. If you want to affect an individual atom, you don't use a strong force because you're going to push it away. You're going to produce disharmony. So in order to solve the fusion problem, you have to do the opposite of what they're doing. Yet billions and billions of dollars are going into re repetitive experimentation with uh, fusion test reactors, tokamak, high, high energy fusion, 
strong magnetic fields, half a million gauss and uh, energies, uh, I don't know, ranging from 23 to 29 million degrees Fahrenheit as, as exists in the sun. And they go higher than that. And they think that the more energy they put in, the more likely it is to produce uh, uh, ignition of the plasma. But that's nonsense. Because the more energy you put in, the more chaotic the system becomes. The plasma hits the wall, cools down, and it's over. The best anybody's done in the world is 18 seconds. I believe it was 18 seconds in South Korea, which is ridiculous. I know how to do fusion. I know how to, I know how to proceed with the important research that's necessary to solve the pandemic of diseases in the world today. Yet yeah, it's like I'm Rodney Dangerfield again, no respect. <laughs> Nobody shows up at the door and says, how do you do it? But I've published a hundred papers, dozens and dozens of patents, yet nobody's doing it. What is the explanation? The explanation is very simple. It's based in corruption, greed, and stupidity. And if I die without ever seeing it, it'll be sad. So I'd rather, go, I'd rather go in my sleep. So I don't know what's happening to this world. You know, I had a friend, Mitch Margot, and I said uh, one day, hey Mitch, you know it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And Mitch said to me, not all of us are dogs. And he's right. So what I wound up doing is dividing humans into three categories. Human degenerative animals, people who hurt other people for no reason, except for their own greed and corruption, selfishness. Human animals who don't really try to do anything of any relevance. They're just based in selfishness. They don't necessarily hurt other people. They don't help anybody. They don't really do anything of any consequence. And humans, the definition to me of a human being is someone who tries earnestly to change the world, to produce a positive ontological state, a kinetic ontological state that potentially, well, not even potentially, but actually, transforms civilization, leading to potential for the future. And everybody's looking for the answer. Everybody's looking for uh, the ultimate answer. But if you don't find it, you don't want anybody else to find it. Because you're selfish. And I'm talking to scientists now. I'm talking to the top scientists in the world, world-class scientists. There's only a handful of world-class scientists who really give a damn about doing anything, about accomplishing anything. Several of them have passed away in recent years. Some of my best friends who tried, they try. Well, that's all you can do is try. Ultimately, it's up to God to make the transition. But somehow I believe that God gives us free will. So even though we can talk about destiny and, and, and ultimate regulation of the uni of universal causation uh, so that no matter what happens you're not really responsible for it you can talk about that but that's nonsense 
you are what you choose and you choose what you are. And it's time for us to choose the right path. I have no idea who's listening. And regardless of who's listening, I have no idea if, if um, you can understand what I'm saying. You do have to be able to discern, you know, a differential between somebody who's telling you the truth and somebody who's lying to you. And it's not always easy. But the fact of the matter is, experiments have been done at Cornell Medical School in nerve regeneration. Um, experiments with the heart at the University of Oklahoma. Experiments with wound healing and cancer cells at Mississippi State University. As a matter of fact, it's kind of ironic because uh, there was an individual at Mississippi State University who uh, was able to get an IRB approval to do 12 or 13 different indications from a clinical standpoint. And we did a demonstration in Hattiesburg many, many years ago. And it was televised. And everybody involved improved. Uh, there was a remarkable improvement in everybody, in every patient that came. And yet, not long after that, the FDA went to Mississippi State and said, if you ever do anything like this again, you'll lose your ability to do any clinical work whatsoever. Politics in medicine? How ridiculous is that? To do a three month study or a six month study in a new drug and get an FDA approval because you have plenty of money, you have millions of dollars to, to set it up properly. And then five years later, 50 people are dead from that drug. Politics in medicine? No. Truth in medicine. The third leading cause of death in this country is malpractice after heart disease and cancer. That's absurd. And that doesn't even include all the people who got hurt, who managed to live several more years with suffering. You just don't get it. This world just doesn't get it. No. All these so-called rigorous laws and rigorous attitudes accomplish absolutely nothing because nobody knows how to think out of the box. Nobody knows how to be free. Nobody knows how to focus on free thought, honest thought. If you make a mistake, if you do something wrong, you have to change. The NIH is not changing anything. They're just looking for different drugs that produce more adverse side effects. The doctors prescribe the drugs that, uh, that salesmen push. They don't even think about it. They don't take it themselves. They have no idea what these drugs do. And they just prescribe it for their patients and torture their patients. And if their patients come back and say, hey, doc, you know, I'm sick from this stuff. The doctor writes a different prescription, says, oh, try this one. That's not medicine. Medicine is when you think about what's wrong with the person, totally, universally. And if you have to confer with other specialists, you, you form a group, you form a committee, and you try to figure out how to save a life, how to preserve and sustain not just a life, but uh, the feeling of being human. Who cares anymore? You have billionaires dreaming about going to Mars. So what? 
all the rockets do today is that all they do is just use more fuel and make them bigger. So they're bigger Chinese uh, firecrackers. That's all they are. We have to advance science. We have to know how to utilize the fundamental structures of the universe. We have to understand how everything communicates with everything else. Through gravito electromagnetic interactions. These forces are convertible, but they're all dependent upon an essential nature of reality. The ultimate Leibnizian monad, or the, uh, or Spinoza's fine structure constant. We're just thinking about Democritus, the early Greek, who coined the term Adam, meaning uncut, dividing everything into pieces until every piece is the same. And the division ultimately sets one to thinking about the grouping of things, the groupings of monads, the orientation of monads, the relativity of monads, how one particulate mass moves with respect to another. Interestingly, there are always force carriers between the structures that create um, ordinary reality. But there have to be force carriers between the force carriers. So you wonder, why isn't all of space-time solid? Descartes spoke about a vortical nature, a liquid But infinity speaks to other realms completely, other realms that can't be understood by man. But he's not even trying. There isn't even an attempt in this world to do anything different. You don't rest on your laurels. If you don't understand something, you have to figure it out. You don't assume that uh, everything in the universe communicates with everything else. Uh, but it can't be proven unless you have this giant accelerator. And you don't stop there. The biological system has every possible, every conceivable force. You have superconduction. You have fissions of cells because cells need to, need to create energy. So when they divide, they, pro they produce binding energy that becomes available for fusions. The organization of life is what makes life. And chaos is what destroys life. And when astronomers look out at the universe and they say, oh, we see violence everywhere, we see chaos everywhere. That's only a relative perception. Because the chaos is completely ordered. Everything that happens in the universe is completely and absolutely ordered. And that order uh, was defined as God by Spinoza, for example. Nature is God. Einstein believed that too. And yet we wonder, is there a creator that is distinct from that which we perceive? A consciousness that produced 
everything that we know and don't know. And when we're sick, violently ill, every one of us, the strongest atheist, prays to God, God, please help me. It's not just fear, but there's some intuitive elemental um, feeling, a transcendent emotion that lets you believe that there is some pervading uh, waveform that exists everywhere. So what I'm telling you today is wake up because the next step in science is available. It's based in a very simple equation which unifies electromagnetism and gravity, which unifies the external field of ordinary matter and dark energy and dark matter. It's time to wake up because time is of the essence. Climate is changing. It's not only changing because man is a filthy animal. It's also changing because things in the sun change. The gravitational effects of cosmic bodies change. The axis of the earth shifts from 22 and a half degrees to 24 degrees. And this shift produces eccentricity and weather. And these changes can produce um, an ice age or they can produce heating. It all depends upon the orientation of the earth with respect to other heavenly bodies. Now we're not talking about astrology. We're talking about uh, cosmology. But cosmology is no different than quantum mechanics because the very large and the very small function according to the same physical principles, the same laws. And it's time we woke up because the safe way to restore health is to utilize magnetotherapy. And not every magnetic field is the same. You have to use the right magnetic fields, the very, very weak magnetic fields that exist naturally in the body that maintain homeostatic function. This is the discovery based upon the equation that we need to use picotesla range magnetic fields, even go down to femtogauss to affect the smaller, smaller particles, you know, uh, atoms, subatomic particles, electrons, quarks that comprise baryons, neutrinos, all the various constituents of matter. The calculation is very simple. The magnetic fields are very weak. The frequencies are low. I'm, I'm not talking about molecular vibrational frequencies. They're high. I'm talking about the basic um, balance of nature. which is controlled by the brain. The different parts of the brain are critically important. The locus ceruleus, remember, produces norepinephrine. It changes the entire balance of a body. The raphe nuclei are critically important. Of course, the hypothalamus regulates so many different functions of the body and the limbic system is regulated ultimately by magnetic flux densities most often in the pico tesla range 
It's time that the medical industry woke up to the future of medicine, and it's time that the physical sciences woke up to a new direction for the production of energy. And there are many other applications of Jacobson resonance, which I won't go into today. But that's enough for one day. That live, right? Mm -hmm. Good.